Okay, so this is for doing some harder things with conservation of energy that involves some other topics. And certainly not that your homework didn't, you already did some like projectile review. Um, so what we've got here is a hollow sphere, right? So that'll be a unique formula that's gonna be released from some height uh, from rest and it's going to roll down without slipping and it's going to just make it over the top here um, so that's that special speed that's come up a few times this year. And we want to do this just in terms of letters. Um, so this gives us a little bit of practice with at least you guys watching me go through this example on the video of just with some letters here. Uh, let me just pause this for a second while I shrink this down. Okay, so the... Uh, so, oh yeah, good, that's working. So the... Um, we're going to use conservation of energy, uh, but the one unique thing about this, and this is really the review point, is we want to talk about what that means just make it over the top. So that means that this little hollow sphere, this little ho hollow marble is going fast enough when it gets to that peak there that it stays in that circular loop, um, but not so fast that the loop needs to push it down. So that special speed, we've talked about this a few times, is when if I was to draw a little circle that represents the marble. And so it of course has its weight still acting down on it, but um, if it's going that special speed, then it doesn't need a normal force pushing down on it. If it's going faster than that, then the track, right, the track would push it down to keep it moving in the circle. If it's going too slow, it actually falls out of the circle and just, you know, kind of crashes down, but it, it doesn't make it over the top of the loop. So this is that special speed. So at that special speed, our, our weight force is essentially the net force. So F net equals MA. Hoping my tablet behaves for me here. It wants to select things. And so the net force is the weight force, which is equal to m times g, which is equal to ma, which in going around a circle is equal to mv squared over r, as you guys remember. And so my velocity, this, you've been here before, my velocity gets, I can solve for it, right? And I'll get v squared is equal to gr. I gotta go and reset my settings for this. There's a little button on here I, I complained about in another video if you watched it. I can't, uh, it keeps like selecting. I just want it to stay a pen right now. Go back to being purple pen. Not doing it. Look at that, it's recognizing text. Uh, so I'm gonna tr keep trying here, bear with me. I don't wanna have to restart this video. All right, so the M cancels out of that and we get V equals uh, square root of GR. And so we're gonna use that because that's, going to be our speed at this second point here. We're going to use conservation of energy. This will be energy sp spot two. This will be energy spot one. So energy total at one place equals energy total at another place. And uh, we're going to keep the bottom as the reference point. If you wanted to, you could make that as your reference level. But because they're asking us for H in, in that terms, as they do sometimes on tests, we're going to leave it at the bottom, right? So we're going to have mgh1 is equal to the gravitational potential energy it has at the top of the loop. So mgh2, that's going to be 2r when we go get to that step, uh, plus that rolling kinetic energy. So 1 half mv squared, this is another trick, right? Not a trick, but a unique thing to this, plus 1 half i omega squared. Very, I think it's pretty easy to forget that. So I've been trying to emphasize that, especially because we're not together. Anyway, uh, and so this velocity here is going to get put in for that. And in the next step, I'm going to convert that omega into a V2. And then um, we'll get the mass dropping out, as you're probably expecting it to. So I'm just going to rewrite all this mg h1. So that's h1 is what we're solving for, right? And mg, this is going to be 2r, right, because it's 2 radii up at the top of that loop, and 1 half mv squared again, um, but I'm going to put in square root of gr for v squared, right, so when that gets put in, that radical gets squared away, and that little r is going to be the big R as given in that diagram, so I'm just switching that to a big R, and then plus 
one half i omega squared. So the i, again, you have to watch it because these are all different shapes. It's not a hoop. This is a hollow sphere. So that formula is 2 thirds mr squared. And then the omega squared there is going to change into a v squared over r, or v squared over r squared. And so that'll cancel out our r squared. So we're going to end up getting 1 half. I clicked it again, didn't I? Yeah, I changed the settings on that last week. It must be tough watching. I don't know how many teachers are making videos for you, but it's it's got to be tedious for you guys. So I'm sorry. It's bad enough in school. So 2 thirds m r squared, and then the v squared. I'm changing that omega to a v over r, so that's a v squared over an r squared. And as happens in these, that r squared can get canceled out like that. And we also see everybody's got an m. That's good. And I'm going to just, in green, if I can, switch this to green and um, simplify this one term. And because you, we'll see in a second that I think something else will cancel out. Right? The two certainly goes, right? So I end up getting one third. And, uh, da, 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 da. and the, oh, that's what I wanted. Yeah, the, I'm just like you guys, a little tired. So the v squared turns into gr. So one third gr. So that whole term at the end there simplified into that. So we can get rid of the G too. Everybody's got a G. Oh, G. Sorry, that was stupid. Sorry. So the G cancels out. And so now I'll switch back to red. Um, H, I'm just going to call it H now. That's what we were asked for in terms of figuring things out, is going to be equal to 2R right? plus half R plus a third R. So just to get all that kind of stacked together, I'm going to change it to, I think, to 6. So this will be 3 6, right? And then that'll be 2 6. And then 2 R will be 12 6, right? So, right? Because that's the same as 2. Fractions. Uh, so 12 plus 3 plus 2, so that's, I can do this 5, 17 6. Oh, this is sad. Let me just get my eraser. I just can't bear with that. <laughs> Back to the red pen, please. Come on. Uh, so 17 6 R. Okay, I'll just leave that. I think that's called an improper fraction, is it? Uh, it's rather than a mixed number. But anyway, that's uh, 12, so that's, that's uh, 2 and 5 6. Right, which kind of makes sense. So it's really, this picture is way out of scale. It's only about another R up, right? So it's only th about that high. So um, if you feel like you're getting this, you don't have to watch this next example unless you just want to. All right, let's do one more. Uh, similar thing here, just trying to, you know, kind of just do something different with the same thing. So we're going to review a normal force here for part B. Um, and this one, find the h value if the disk is going as fast as it can and still remain on the track over the top of the second hill. So if you released it from too high up, if you have a lot of Hot Wheels experience in your life, if you release this from too high up, it actually would launch off of that like a ramp. So the idea is we want to find the special height so it just stays <coughs> excuse me, on this track. And so uh, if it goes too slow, it won't make up that hill right at that top of that hill there. Um, it can still be moving. It's not a velocity zero, but it's going to be a, um, a velocity that it's just making it over the top. And so that's a very similar circumstance to what we did before. If I were to draw a little circle and say, hey, that's right when it's there at the top of that hill, uh, the only thing that's happening is the weight force is acting down on it. So that's still going to be that special case, right, that we derived before. So if we equal square root of gr. So that's the same thing. So um, if we just run through that quick, like I said, you didn't have to watch this again if you were getting it. Energy at the release point is equal to the energy at the top. I'll just call this 2, right, at the top of that little hill there. And it's a solid disk this time. So a solid disk is going to be 1 half mr squared, just, just saying. And so I'm going to find that h, gh. 
equals, uh, and that's going to be, at the top of that second hill, it's going to be MGR. Right? It's just one radius up this time. So some slight differences, but nothing huge. And then 1 half MV squared plus 1 half I omega squared. And uh, we're going to fix that up a little bit. Um, leaving that the same, waiting for this to get simplified here. The, sorry, that's a plus. Uh, so we're going to put our V in here, so we're going to get 1 half M, and then again, square root of GR squared is just GR, and then this is going to be 1 half, uh, what a solid disk. I'm so afraid of making that stupid mistake I made last week. So solid disk is 1 half MR squared, V squared over R squared. So, similar, you know, we're just trying to take slow steps here, so switching to blue, and canceling out that r squared. And then we can get rid of our m now before we do the next line. Everybody's got an m. That's my m in there. And then again, this is going to, that v squared is going to become a gr, right? So I'm going to take care of that. If you watch the first part of this, I'm not going to do that separately. So the g also can be canceled term by term. There's my g. And so I get h keep it in blue, uh, is equal to r plus half r. And I a little letter oversight there. I'm going to change my little r to a big r. And a half of a half is a quarter. Uh, r. So that's going to be 1 and 3 quarters r. Right. No, back to that again. Pen. Okay, so that's part A. Part B, uh, find the normal force at the bottom of the first hill. So that's over here. Uh, so that's a bit of a pain. We have to do conservation of energy again. It's going to be going faster down there. Um, so I'm going to have to reboot my conservation of energy. No, nothing really dramatically different, just a little bit of a pain. And just making myself some room there. Okay, let's switch to black ink. And so I have, uh, so we've got this this height. So I'm going to be putting an MG 7 fourths R, right? So now we know the height from which it's released. And um, at the bottom of the other hill, we're going to have all kinetic energy, no gravitation. So a little easier. So 1 half MV squared. And then we did this simplification before, and so it's going to be a quarter mv squared. And we're going to end up staying in the pen mode here. Uh, ugh, quarter. Can I fix this? No, it's so sad. Yeah, I'm sorry I don't have time to make professionally produced videos here. Just trying to give you what you need torture. Uh, so we end up getting three quarters mv squared. The m cancels out again. So let's just neaten that up and see what we get. And you guys can put this on double speed and figure this out pretty fast. But uh, And since I'm thinking about normal force, I'll just solve for v squared. So just getting this next step, the g doesn't cancel here. So g Seven, I'm going to bring that seven fourths out front. <laughs> seven fourths g r equals three. Could have canceled that four. Uh, v squared. And let's get, make some more room here. And so the four goes, gets canceled away. And uh, my v squared is going to equal. too much at once here. Uh, seven thirds GR. Right? Yes. Okay. All right. So normal force at the bottom of the hill. So when we look at the bottom of the hill here, we have to go back to drawing a free body diagram. So F net equals MA. That's why we draw the free body diagram. Terrible. 
and that's equal to mv squared over r because it's going in a circle. And the at that bottom, I'm just going to you know say here it is, and I'm going to draw a line over and say there is a circle. And at the bottom, the normal force is acting up, and the weight force is acting down. So the net force, I'll take up to be the positive direction. That's supposed to be an up arrow there. It's I know it's sad. It's sad somebody put me out of my misery. So normal force minus mg is equal to mv squared over r. Did it again. Uh, I'm not in pen mode. OK, there we go. mv squared over r. All right, wonderful. So we're trying to find the normal force. Uh, I have this nice relationship for the v. I needed to find that, right? So I'm going to bring that over and put that in. Uh, that's why I left it v squared, right? So I get m 7 thirds g r over r, right? And the r cancels out. I just want to switch colors here. And uh, so I have uh, 7 thirds mg, and I'm going to add over the mg. So I'm solving for the normal force, right? So I'm adding over that mg term here. And uh, uh, 7 thirds plus 3 thirds is 10 thirds. So that works out to 10 thirds mg. End of story. So we get it in terms of the mass, and that kind of sh should make sense. It's going to uh, be pushed up with a force greater than its weight because it's going fast at the bottom of that hill. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, you guys are the best. If you're listening to this, you're working hard. I appreciate it.